So today, I'm a little down. Come on, Richie, what's going on? What's got you down? Well, I'm suffering from the small turbo blues. You know what I mean. You put a turbo on your car, runs good, you turn it up a little, then you turn it up a little, and you turn it up a little. Now, last time, you go to turn it up a little bit more, and there's nothing left. There's no power left, because you got a small turbo. Now you got the small turbo blues. But don't worry, there's a cure. It's simple, put on a bigger turbo. In this video, we're gonna take a look at a back-to-back -back comparison between two turbos on the same motor. Now we're starting off with a small responsive turbo that a guy might buy if you listen to that Richard Holdner guy, you know, buy that cheap eBay turbo, put it on there, it works great up to this certain point, up to the seven or 800 horsepower, works great. It's only $163, if it goes out, you can buy a new one. But the problem with that is we all do the same thing. We put that turbo on, it goes out and it runs great. And, and hey, maybe you're working really well, you got a good combination, maybe the thing goes out and runs 10s. Maybe it runs 1090s and you go, hey, I'm that close, I think I could get into the 9s, whatever the number is. So you turn the boost up, and you turn the boost up, and you turn the boost up, and you're at a 920, and then a 9, or a 1020, and then a 1010, and you're in the 10 O's, you're like, I just gotta get into the 9s. What I need now, because I've basically run out of boost, is more turbo. So we step up to the bigger turbo, and no big surprise, we make more power. That's not real revolutionary. <laughs> That's not even real good information. The important thing here is that don't pick the smaller turbo to begin with. See, even though I tell you, yeah, get the cheap turbo and it works really well, and it does for most guys that are trying to run low power stuff. But the problem with turbos is we all grow tired of just running seven pounds. Then we wanna run 10 and 12 and 14 and whatever, pretty soon it's, it's all of the turbo, whatever it will support. If we don't choose that turbo to begin with, if we know we're eventually gonna go there, if you're gonna run seven pounds for the rest of your life, then, then pick the little turbo. But most of us don't do that. So pick the other turbo that will get you where you're going, not where you've been. Get the bigger turbo, size it correctly, and, and I would rather have a, a milder, softer turbo at the bottom and have more power at the top than the other way around. So pick a good size turbo to begin with and you won't be disappointed, you won't have to upgrade later on. Let's check out our results. Our big turbo, small turbo comparison was actually run on a Stroker LS3. It was an LS3 aluminum block with a four inch crank. So it was a 4070 bore and a four inch crank. We had forged internals in it and flat top pistons. We'd actually use the, these 400 inch Stroker LS motor for other kind of testing, but we also wanted to put turbos on or a single turbo on it and find out how it did. So to get things started, we ran this thing naturally aspirated as we always do before we had boost, just so we could make sure that the thing is doing what it's supposed to do. So we had that short block with flat top pistons and valve reliefs. We had a, <laughs> of all things, a cathedral port camshaft in it. It was a 54 459 11 cam, and it was a 617, 624 lift. 231, 239 degree duration split and 113 degree lobe separation angle. This thing also had a set of GM performance parts, um, CNC ported LS3 heads on it and the fast LSXR intake. We had a set of inch and seven eighths American racing headers on it. So this was a fairly, fairly stout combination, you know, much better than your typical junkyard motor that I like to play with. So equipped as such and run in naturally aspirated trim after we dialed the tune in, this thing produced 608 horsepower, nice flat torque curve, 570 foot pounds of torque. But before we added the turbo, we actually made an interesting change on it. And I wanted to show you guys this. We installed another set of heads. We installed another set of ported LS3 heads, and they came from the guys over at Speedmaster, but they were actually worked over by the guys at Dr. J's, and there's an interesting um, comparison here. So the red is the modified Pro Comp heads that we put on, and one of the things I can tell you is I, I flow tested these, and they flowed really well. As a matter of fact, they probably outflowed the GM Performance Parts heads, but the thing that they did have was a much bigger chamber. I mean, these things had the biggest chamber I'd ever seen on them, and obviously they had been reworked, but they had an 81cc chamber, and I'd never seen anything like that. But in, in looking at this, it's one of the reasons that we put these on. The reason for that is because we wanted to lower the compression, you know, because you always want to run low compression with boost. Even though we were running race gas, it probably wouldn't have made a difference. But I wanted to try these other heads just to see what happened. So we had a lower starting point, so equipped with these um, low compression, big chamber heads. 
the power output dropped to 576 horsepower and right at 550, uh, right at 551 foot pounds of torque. So this was our starting point. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we started adding boost from the different turbos. After running our LS3 stroker up on the dyno and then making our head swap, it was time to look at this combination and apply some boost. So we were still making 576 horsepower and 551 foot-pounds of torque with those big chamber pro comp heads, but we decided to install a single turbo and we, on this particular combination, I actually ran three or four different turbos. We ran a 76 millimeter from CX Racing. We ran that little GT45 that's so popular. We also ran another unit from Precision and then an 80 millimeter, which I'm going to show you later on from the guys at Comp Turbo. So here's the GT45 Turbo. Call that the small turbo. <laughs> That's our GT45 Turbo. And as you can see, it, it, this is, it did actually fairly well for a motor of this displacement. Um, I didn't monitor back pressure back then when we ran this test because we ran this test a long time ago. As a matter of fact, this is about when the guys from CX Racing, when their GT45 like was first introduced, all they had was the 76 millimeter before that. But when we ran this GT45, it was about the best that I'd seen up to then, especially on a 400 inch stroker. Normally they'd have a lot of back pressure and I should have monitored it, but back then we didn't do that. It was blowing through a single air to air intercooler. We had a, a decent sized fan in front of it, but we always worry that on an air to air deal in the engine dyno that it's not getting the cooling that it should because we're not, you know, we don't have a hundred mile an hour wind going through. It does have a lot of airflow and the fan certainly helps it. And sometimes we run misters on them too to, to help with the charge cooling. I just don't know how you actually simulate what's going on in the street with an air to air. It's a lot easier to control that with an air to water because you can get a fairly consistent um, temperature drop and a pressure drop there. So it works pretty well. But anyway, this is what happened when we ran our our GT45 turbo, the thing made 765 horsepower and 814 foot-pounds of torque. So it was pretty torquey, which we'd expect from the combination of extra displacement and boost because the combination was working pretty well. But what we saw, like we saw with some of the other smaller turbos, when we turned the boost up, the only thing that would happen is we would raise this area, the power up basically would raise the torque below 4500 and not really show much change out of the power peak because it was kind of just done. It just didn't have any airflow left and it probably also had high back pressure. But now let's take a look and see what happened when we ran the big turbo. So here's what happened when we installed that. So this was an 80 millimeter from Comp Turbo and this was, uh, I, I had only run this a few times and I'm assuming given the dimensions that this was easily a thousand horsepower turbo and it showed it here it certainly had more left we didn't run it all the way up i just kind of wanted to demonstrate that hey look here's what happened when you don't have enough turbo and you only want to make this amount of power if you would have stepped up to the right turbo to begin with and obviously this is much more prevalent on a uh, big displacement motor like this you know you don't have to worry so much about boost response because you got plenty and with a gt45 if anything it's probably too small for the application. It's a much better comparison on a smaller motor. And we'll take a look at that. I've already, I already have one video up, so if you check it out, it's right up here. It's the comparison between the GT45 and the Summit Racing Turbo on the smaller 5.3. But we got similar results where we were up in the, you know, getting close to 800 horsepower with that 5.3, and I'll, I'll show you those in just a second. And then that when we added the Summit Turbo, which is an S475, we were able to go up obviously well beyond that. So make sure to choose the right size turbo for your combination and a gt45 turbo and a <laughs> and a stroker combination like this although you could see it works really well if this is all the power that you want probably better for a bigger turbo so i thought we'd take a quick look at the data that i did have and that's the boost curves of the two different turbos now this is a small well i say small it's a gt45 turbo it's small for the size of the motor or the size of our test motor that we put it on but you can see the boost came up and this thing could supply, you know, as much as nine pounds, but only at 42 or 4,300 RPM. And then the boost fell off thereafter because it just couldn't support anything. Now, when we tried to run more boost and turn it up, all we had was a, uh, a manual wastegate controller on this thing. We could fill boost in here between 3,000 and 4,000 RPM. We could get this peak to come up a little bit, but it would always fall off in this matter and basically end up at the same spot. This thing just really didn't have any more boost to give. So when we put the bigger turbo on, here's what happened when we put the big turbo on. 
it would provide more boost and it had the same kind of thing which tells me that, that there was back pressure obviously quite a bit of back pressure present even on this bigger turbo um, we had a falling boost curve even on the big turbo and i don't think we were near the limit of that big turbo even at 900 horsepower i think we've done a thousand horsepower with that 80 millimeter turbo but i don't have the back pressure readings back this was done way back when before we were doing that well I mean, it wasn't before I was taking back pressure readings, but I didn't do it on this particular combination. But this was a manual wastegate controller. If I had the electronic one, this curve probably would be nice and flat, assuming that the turbo would do that. But here's what happened when we went from a small turbo to a big turbo. What happened to the boost curves anyway? We kind of saw the same thing with the power curves. When you have a falling boost curve like that, the power is just not going to climb. It, and if it falls rapidly, the the peak power is actually just going to go away. So here's the boost curves. Now let's take a look at, uh, it was, we'll just take a quick look at what went on with that um, smaller 5.3 liter with the GT45, even though I already have a video up on that. So I'll go through this real quickly. This is a 5.3 liter. It was owned by David Freiberger. It had forged internals. It was topped off by TrickFlow 225 heads. He allowed me to use this, mo this test motor. It had a Summit Stage 3 turbo cam in it. And we first ran it with the GT45 and then upgraded to a Summit S475. So this is really already in a video that's up, so you guys can check that out. We did a full comparison between the GT45 and the Summit. I just want to show you that this correlates with what we did on that bigger LS3. And this was on a 5.3. So this is our GT45 on the 5.3. 664 horsepower at about 8 pounds. I'll just go through this really quickly. So we started going up in boost. 9.6, 11.8, 13, and then finally 14 pounds. So as you can see, it's kind of fallen off there at the end. We're, we're getting up near the limit of that GT45 as always. So I'm going to get rid of a bunch of these things. And I'll just show you where the beginning and end was. So that was with the GT45, but here's what happened when we put the S475 turbo on, and this one was up at like 17 pounds because it had more boost to give and had more flow. The S475 is just a bigger turbo than that GT45. So here's what happened with the S475. We're easily able to top the 900 horsepower mark, and we could have gone farther than that because that S475 probably will support 1,000 horsepower. It made, what, 923 here, and... 886 foot pounds of torque like i said at about 17 pounds so here's what happens when you and, and at 3500 the the summit turbo always had more boost than the other one and more power so it's fairly responsive even on this combination this is what happens when you choose the right turbo <laughs> if you choose a small one you'll you can only make a certain amount of power if you choose the bigger one you got a lot of room to grow okay guys what'd you think about our turbo comparison basically it's a turbo upgrade and honestly it's pretty predictable we put a small turbo on our LS, and then we turned it up and turned it up and turned it up till there's no more turbo left. Then we put a bigger turbo on and we make even more power. That's pretty normal. But here's the thing. Size the turbo so that you don't have to do that. So you don't have to upgrade later on. Pick a turbo that's not too small. Pick the turbo for not where you want to be now, but for where you want to be later. Now the ideal situation, we'd all love to have the big power of a 88 or 90 or 100 millimeter turbo and the response rate of this tiny little T3 turbo. But unfortunately, that kind of turbo doesn't really exist. So we're forced to choose the right turbo for our application. Here's my advice. Pick something that's a little bit on the big side. I'd rather have a little bit softer bottom end, a little more lag, and have a lot more power at the top than the other way around. Armature Holder guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. More turbo stuff coming up.